So we were with uh, Jonathan Marr from uh, L'Oreal. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, I'm a nice to be here. Uh, likewise, I mean, you're based in Paris. Uh, I, was, I was promised that we could see the Eiffel Tower somewhere in the back, but I'm not sure that I actually can actually spot it, but uh, <laughs> it's there. Okay, good, good. Good yeah, to know yeah, that it's still there. Uh, so Jonathan is with L'Oreal's uh, corporate affair and, and is the leader, I think, of uh, L'Oreal's work on inclusive growth and part of an initiative that the OECD chairs or organizes uh, that's called Business for Inclusive Growth that uh, has some uh, almost 40 uh, global businesses on inclusive growth. And, and sort of a word, we, we did a session, you might remember that we did a session in Israel on L'Oreal's 2030 sustainability goals quite recently. So this is an opportunity to look at a sort of different angle, which is more, let's say, the social part of L'Oreal. Uh, which is, by the way, quite strong in Israel, uh, Jonathan. I mean, the whole work on, on social and inclusive growth. So uh, jumping over to you, how would you define sort of inclusive growth, uh, especially now during COVID uh, time? Yeah, thank you, Memo. Thank you very much for having me. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Marr. I'm the Deputy Director of Institutional Affairs for L'Oreal. So I've been involved um, in the B4IG coalition from the beginning, so which was launched in August 2019. It was during the G7 summit. Um, and so how do we define inclusive growth at L'Oreal? And you're going to see we're very much uh, on the same page as B4IG in terms of how they define uh, inclusive growth as well. So the way we see inclusive growth L'Oreal is obviously, you know, we understand the notion of growth, how a company grows. But we've realized that you can, there are ways to ensure that as you grow, you can, you can generate more positive externalities. Now, obviously, we talk a lot about what we're doing from an environmental standpoint, but, but we also feel that we want to find ways as we grow to ensure that, you know, populations who are typically uh, underprivileged, uh, 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 individuals who are typically underprivileged or excluded from the job market, they could also benefit from uh, that growth which is being generated. And, and the way we typically do at L'Oreal is we look at our supply chain and, uh, and we see as the way in our relationship with our suppliers and can we leverage our spend, you know, what we're spending in our supply chain whenever we have tenders, whenever we have contracts with suppliers, is this an opportunity also um, as, you know, some of that activity will create work, is it an opportunity to make that work available to under underprivileged populations and, and, and very you know at a very practical level how do we work is that with each one of those suppliers we look at ways where they could leverage our spend to hire individuals who would really fall under a category of people who are typically underprivileged or people who are typically excluded from the job market and, uh, and so we've created a program called solidarity sourcing and, uh, and we do this across the world i'm sure we even have solidarity sourcing program projects in Israel, for example, uh, where, so through our procurement programs, through our different procurement categories, we're able to create work um, for these underprivileged populations. And uh, I don't have the latest figures in mind, but we're talking about tens of, of thousands of, uh, of, of jobs and individuals who benefit from this. So, um, so there we have, so, so maybe if, if, you, if you're willing, maybe I'll say a word about B4IG and where does B4IG fit in um, with this? So we're, we've been doing this for 15 years, solidarity sourcing, what we call our inclusive sourcing program. But we thought B4IG was a brilliant idea because all of a sudden we could take some of our ideas and we know companies have other ideas too. They're doing different things in different areas. And we just thought finally this might be an opportunity for us to collaborate more, to learn from each other, to do more um, uh, test and look learn, uh, look also how we can scale some of these projects together, because even we, L'Oreal, we encounter very quickly the limits of what we can do individually, even a very big company like L'Oreal. And all of a sudden, like you said, when you have 38 or some of the biggest companies in the world, we can start thinking about what we can do together on a whole other scale. And, um, and so, yeah, so then we were very, very excited by the opportunity here. We found that, you know, that we've been in, it's been about a year now that we've been part of D4IG, a little bit more than a year. And, uh, and there's really this strong sense that everybody shares those sort of convictions about I inclusive growth and, and looking at what we can do together. And, and that, that's really fascinating because, you know, the Israeli market has traditionally worked much more on issues that we could term under inclusive growth. We wouldn't necessarily use that word, 
But I think it, would, it essentially comes to that. And we always felt that uh, the world is talking about sustainability and environment, and we're somewhat sort of behind that. I think we, we, we definitely, there was a catch up on that, but COVID arrived, the, the, the coalition was launched before COVID, but COVID yeah. arrived and I think uh, it's, it's sort of, it's more relevant than ever, right? Yes, yes it is, absolutely. And just a word about what you just said a moment ago, you're absolutely right to say that. I mean, we all have our different semantics, you know, the term inclusive growth, like you said, there's, you know, inclusive growth has existed since forever, um, you know, uh, and, and it can be different things. It can be like fair trade programs when we're talking about raw materials, where you know that the workers there are going to be, are going to get decent, you know, decent pay and, you know, are going to get a certain like um, commodity price. So, so the notion of inclusive growth has always existed. Now we've just sort of, this is sort of the term we're using, but, uh, but now to go back to what you said, you're absolutely right. I mean, we launched in August, 2019, and you got to remember the context back then is, you know, there was a sense that in the world, there was more and more inequality. We were seeing often the gap between rich and poor was continuing to increase. And, you know, last year, um, and this was leading to also a lot of social tensions in different countries. And there was just this feeling, okay, what can we, some of the bigger companies do? to try to um, find ways also, you know, I mean, not from a government policy standpoint, but in terms of what we can do uh, as, as companies to try to share the wealth and share the growth um, in a more equitable way. So that was in August of last year. And then all of a sudden comes 2020, COVID of course, and a lot of companies, including L'Oreal, we did a number of things during COVID to support our own business ecosystem. But then quickly we saw that we were also, the world was entering into an economic crisis we had never seen. And we're seeing it very, very tragically that it has really made a lot of, a lot of communities are under financial duress today across the world. You know, we're seeing uh, unfortunate people, uh, you know, who had managed to get out of poverty, who are now falling back into poverty. So the pledge we took last year in August in a way has become even more relevant a year later, just unfortunately because of, uh, of what happened with the COVID and how we have, everybody has to think about the COVID recovery and like, okay, what can we do to help these millions of people who, you know, in a most unexpected way have found themselves really in, in, in dire straits. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with, with everything that you said. And I definitely think that we need to hear more about, inclusive growth alongside sustainability, because I think it's often talked about that inequality and sustainability are linked together and you can't really solve one without the other. And, and to go back to your um, examples with the supply chain sourcing, that's a very powerful way for a company to actually make a difference and, and support smaller businesses or, or even entrepreneurs so could you share some examples of, from L'Oreal or from, from other companies in the initiative? I mean, first of all, you got to keep in mind that you take a company like L'Oreal, but this will probably apply to all of the big companies um, as part of B4IG. I mean, you look at our supply chain, and when I say supply chain, that might seem a little abstract, but what are we talking about? We're talking about the suppliers of our raw materials uh, in, our, in our products, so including all of the farming communities who provide you know, plant-based uh, ingredients and raw materials. We're talking about the packaging components. We're talking about the suppliers of our logistics. We're also talking about, it could be maybe the marketing firms we work with. It can also be, you know, um, all the types of services we call upon. It can, you know, even at a, um, so, so, you know, L'Oreal, we have thousands of suppliers. And, and, and that's where you realize, and, and that goes for L'Oreal, but you can imagine that goes for all of the, you know, all of the big um, companies as part of B4IG. So it's very simple. The way we work is we've created a program, at least L'Oreal, and then I'll come back to before I do. We come, we've created a program where we're just trying to think about how we can use our procurement strategy as a way to try to embed these inclusive uh, growth, inclusive sourcing principles in our procurement strategy so that in when, we're, when, you know, when we have tenders, when we're selecting um, uh, suppliers on a given contract, um, uh, that we're looking to generate work for underprivileged populations. So now what we're doing in D4IG is we're expanding that. Okay, so I've, I've talked a lot about L'Oreal, but in parallel, you have other companies, you like it, you take a company like Exa, you know, who is looking about what can they can do in terms of insurance policies. Um, and so under the D4IG incubator, we have a one great program between Exa and, and, uh, and L'Oreal to look at how can we also think about insurance policies for certain uh, farmers, uh, for, for 
in, in this case, it's farmers in, in, in Burkina Faso that can ensure, um, provide um, the sort of coverage they would need um, to, um, to cover the sort of financial volatility that they can encounter as farmers. So that's, you know, obviously that's not our, our core business. So that's typically where a group like AXA in the insurance business is thinking about too, how can they think about inclusive business principles in their field? We also have, you know, uh, companies within B4IG who are thinking about, well, they might be in the consumer goods field, you know, like um, food or, um, you know, uh, utilities or real estate. And each one of them is thinking, okay, what can we do to make our products more accessible and more affordable to certain types of populations? Um, and, you know, we're also looking at how all of our companies across B4IG can just kind of raise the bar in terms of, um, what we're doing in terms of a, a certain number of, uh, of workplace standards, in terms of inclusivity and diversity. Uh, and and so, so, so the idea here is really everybody looks at what are their core, core competencies are in, in, in their markets. And then they're just but you're looking at it from the lens of inclusive business. So once again, if we take the case of L'Oreal, we put a lot of focus right now on inclusive sourcing and trying to share what we're doing with the other companies, also learning from them. And just saying, okay, can we really leverage our supply chain? Or, you know, every time you can't, I mean, there's so much. Um, we're, 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 we have an ecosystem where we're working with thousands of companies and small companies, big companies, but across the world. I mean, and, and when you see the amounts we're also spending, you know, there are opportunities there really also to make that, um, that work available to populations now. When I say populations but are underprivileged, I've been using that term from the beginning. Who am I referring to? It, it sort of depends. I mean, it can be handicapped populations in certain company, in certain countries. It may be certain minorities who are typically excluded from the job market. It may be veterans. Um, it might be the elderly. It might be in certain parts of a given country. We know that there are uh, regions of that country that which are typically underdeveloped. Um, you know, something else that we could choose to favor, if you like, is you could say we, and, and we do this as well, you can say we L'Oreal, we want to favor in our procurement policy suppliers who are owned by women or by minorities, what we call women-owned businesses or minority-owned businesses. That's another way to embed these sort of inclusive business principles in our procurement policy so that these individuals, these companies, these communities can benefit from our, our business. Yeah. It's absolutely, uh, it's a very powerful way of, of looking into how the business can uh, do capacity building, do empowerment, do uh, find actually business case for uh, and, and connect it to innovation uh, um, in a way that supports uh, those who want to enter the market and suggest new ideas. Um, oh, again, everything needs to be very proactive. Jonathan, to wrap up, and no, no, go ahead. No, no, I, I just really want to, I want to really emphasize what you just said, Momo. I mean, you, you, I love the terms you use, like, that's, that's the purpose of B4IG, because once again, you've got 38 companies who all, each one of them individually are doing very interesting things. I, I've spoken for L'Oreal, but if you had invited somebody from another company, they could just as equally have spoken about all the great programs they did. The purpose of B4IG is a capacity building, it's really thinking scale, is that the only reason we would create this coalition is that ultimately sort of the sum of what we do can really be expanded because we're realizing that with that scale, we can sort of overcome certain barriers we each met individually. So that's really the, the meaning of B4IG. Yeah, and, and we've definitely seen, I think, the, powerful, the power of those coalition, the impact that they've made in sustainability. So now doing that in, on inclusive growth definitely, I think, gives us hope. To sort of wrap up, uh, there's, you know, again, COVID, uh, we've, we, we hear it from a lot of companies that, uh, let's take the investors' uh, point of view, ESG investors, they're asking much more about the S, about how company uh, sort of are resilient. Uh, is there a business continuing in, term in terms of the human capital? Uh, and I know that before 4IG is also thinking about ways how to measure uh, inclusive growth. So any sort of probably initial thoughts, but still thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, what I, all, all I can say on that is you're absolutely right. Like there's a, um, we're trying to think in terms of a holistic business model here. 
And so there's going to be a point where we realize that it's not just companies doing things, you know, a small pilot here or there. We have to ultimately do it in such a way where, like you say, the financial markets, the um, we're sending, we'll, we'll, we'll see the value of what we're doing. We'll really see sort of the, 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 the value proposition of what we're doing. So we have to be able to translate what we're doing in metrics that will really speak to those, um, speak to those actors and to those constituencies. Now, the way we've done that at B4G, which is very interesting, is we have an incubator on the one hand, which incubates some of these projects, really trying to find ways to enhance them, overcome some of the barriers we talked about very, very briefly. And then afterwards, there's a financing forum to see how you can take those same ideas and then sort of have them work with some of the financial actors to make sure that ultimately the financial actors potentially can really make these into feasible projects, you know, and, and can also provide their expertise in terms of how can we ensure that these projects are perceived by the financial community as feasible ones because the financial community understands that they have sort of this, um, they're, they're, they're enhanced by the, you know, that the, the, the inclusive business makes them a more resilient model ultimately in, in today's world. And, um, and so, so, so I, I, I can't really get into the metrics right now, but what I can say is that in the governance of B4IG, we have, it's, that's really key for B4IG, it, it is to make sure that we're thinking through this like in a most holistic way to say, okay, ultimately we don't just want these to be these really nice projects, but in the end that are not really feasible from a business model standpoint. We wanna we want to, we want to kind of go, we wanna see this through to the very end and also ultimately, um, put them to the test of the financial markets to say, okay, would, would this be the sort of product you would be willing to finance tomorrow uh, based on, on the value proposition we're making? Yeah, absolutely. And again, looking at all that sort of, I think, very extensive journey that, that, that we as a community has sort of been going through this past decade or two decades with the E, with the environment and developing metrics, right. uh, which can pretty much give us a, a good sort of an accurate uh, uh, sort of understanding of how a company is doing. So I think we could be hopeful that we'll manage to crack uh, the S and this is definitely uh, the time uh, to do it right now. Jonathan, th this has been fascinating. Yeah, go ahead and, and I was going no, to no, just sort of turn word. it over to oh, you for okay. wrapping up, so go ahead. <laughs> it's a final word. First of all, thank you very much for having me. And as you've been saying, it's so important that the SEE that, you know, it's like, it, you know, the, the social justice component, even to sustainability is so key, like it's the flip side, you know, you can't. Um, and so you're absolutely right, you know, in, in, there's environmental social, there's environmental sustainability, but of course, there's also social sustainability, and we have to think about it and, and in, uh, on, on both dimensions. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, for convenience sake, I use sustainability for environment, but I also, yeah, you're absolutely right. Jonathan, we'll, we'll certainly continue this discussion because I think we are all on the same sort of journey to find the sort of, uh, I think, the way that business can make a, a difference in terms of inclusive growth. So thank you very much for this fascinating conversation and sharing your work with us. Thank you very much.